Will you join me in a word of prayer? O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The people of Israel ate that first Passover in haste. They ate it with their belts fastened around their waist, with their sandals on their feet, with their staff in their hand. They ate it ready because the Lord was coming. And they were ready for him to come because he was taking them out of that place. He was taking them to a new place, to a promised land. But after that first Passover, the Passover then became a meal of remembrance, a time of looking back on what the Lord had done. Instead of a meal to eat in haste, it was a meal that was eaten patiently. Instead of a meal to eat with expectant hope, it was a meal to eat in worshipful reflection. And the people of Israel, at times, kept the festival of the Passover as the Lord had given it to the people through Moses and Aaron. And at other times, the first month of the year came and went. The 14th day of the month came and went. The 21st day of the month came and went. And hardly anyone in Israel remembered to celebrate the Passover. So that when we get to the time of the kings, it's in 2 Kings chapter 22, hundreds of years after the people of Israel had come in to the land of promise, in the 18th year of King Josiah, king in Jerusalem, he declared that all Israel should keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread and celebrate the Passover as the Lord had given it to the people through Moses and Aaron. And they did so. In 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 22 says, Neither in the days of the judges when they ruled Israel, nor in the days of the kings of Israel or the kings of Judah had any such Passover been celebrated. And it was shortly after the time of Josiah that the people went into exile for their faithlessness. But the Lord did again what he had done in the days of Moses and Aaron. And he brought the people out of exile to the promised land. And when he did, one of the first things they did was to celebrate the Passover. Ezra tells us about it in Ezra chapter 6. Ezra the priest describes how they celebrated the Passover for the first time in many, many years, perhaps the first time since King Josiah's day. They celebrated the Passover again in the land. And, and somewhere between that Passover celebration and the coming of Jesus, the Passover took on a new dimension. It took on again an air of anticipation. No longer was it just a time of remembrance. It was that. But it took on also an expectation of hope. You see, because the last of the Old Testament prophets, Malachi, closed the word of the Lord in the Old Testament by sharing this word from the Lord. It's the last verses in our Old Testament. Behold, I will send to you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. The Lord was about to do again what he did in Egypt. And so the people prepared themselves for the Passover. Because they were looking for the Lord to come. But like Malachi said, they were looking for Elijah to come first. And so Jesus' disciples asked him about this once. It was on the way down from the Mount of Transfiguration. In Matthew chapter 17, Peter, James, and John had been there with Jesus. And they had seen Moses and Elijah standing there on the mountain, talking with Jesus. And so coming down the mountain, they asked Jesus, why do the scribes say that Elijah must first come? And Jesus answered, Elijah does come and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come. And they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So the Son of Man, too, 
will certainly suffer at their hands. And then Matthew adds, chapter 17, verse 13, then the disciples understood that he had been talking about John the Baptist. Not only has Elijah come, but also the Lord said in the gospel reading that we read for tonight on that very first passion account from Luke's gospel in Luke chapter 22, I have longed to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer, for I will not eat of it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Not only has Elijah come, but the Passover has been fulfilled. The custom of sacrificing the Passover lambs, of choosing the Passover lambs, of waiting until the 14th day, of choosing the one that's without blemish, of choosing a male a year old from the goat or from the sheep, it, it's all been fulfilled in the sacrifice of the final and ultimate Passover lamb, Jesus. It's been fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And so the apostles of the Lord encourage us. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. 1 Corinthians 5, verses 7 and 8. Let us celebrate the Passover festival. And so, and so we do celebrate it. But we celebrate it with that air of anticipation. Not like the Old Testament disciples did. Not even after the days of Ezra. Which there's still a lot of Jewish faithful that do that today. Even to today, Jewish faithful, when they're setting for the Passover meal, will set an extra space there for Elijah. And they'll set an extra cup of wine for Elijah, because Elijah's invited. And at the end of the meal, if he hasn't come yet, they'll send a child to the door to open the door and look to see if Elijah is coming before the meal's over. Because Elijah, for them, is the herald of the messianic hopes and the redemption of the kingdom. He was the herald of the messianic hopes of the redemption of the kingdom. And as Jesus said, he has come. And the Messiah has come. And the Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us. So we look forward with anticipation as well. This meal is not just a meal in remembrance. Oh, it is remembrance. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. But it's more than just remembrance because we're looking forward. We're looking forward to that coming day of the Lord. And we, who eat of the flesh of this Passover lamb of Jesus, with the unleavened bread, drink not only of the cup, of the fruit of the vine, but we drink of the cup of his blood. We drink of that hope of anticipation and expectation that he will pass over us because of the blood of Jesus. When he comes, he will pass over us and spare us and deliver us from his wrath and take us into that new land, that new promise, heaven and earth that are perfected just as he said he would give it to us. And this is why the apostles of the Lord invite us to eat this bread and drink of this cup. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29. For as often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so tonight we share in it together. Not only solemnly, but expectantly. In Jesus' name. Amen.